Hey everybody, it's your girl Angie. Welcome back to Kiss My Cheeks TV. Let's get into Ready to Love. This is episode two. Your girl didn't take no notes. I had all intentions to get up this morning, re-watch the episode, take some notes. But then I said, no, nah, if I got to re-watch it <laughs> and take notes, that means they didn't entertain me. So I want to just go off of the relationships I saw forming off the dome. And let's just get into it because I want to be fresh. I don't want to write everything down and be calculated in my review. I want it to be a fresh review with my fresh opinions. Plus, I ain't feel like watching it again. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is the first time all the people get to meet each other. So it is first impressions for the couples, not our first impressions, but the cast first impressions of each other. I will say one thing, I feel like I've changed my mind about 50% of the men on the show and at least 25% of the women. I do see a lot of ancient people <laughs> just from this first meeting. <sighs> I see one of my cast faves, you know, one of my star cast members getting ready to get her feelings hurt. <sighs> Let's get into it. I don't remember the order everybody came in, but I do remember Stacy was one of the females that walked in. She was the first female to walk in. Stacy is gorgeous, but she gives me, yeah, I'm educated. Yeah, I own my own business, but I'm going to play this. <laughs> boop, boop, be -de -de -doot. Betty Boop, ditzy character in front of the men. Like, she didn't give me strong business owner. She gave me, he, 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 basketball wife looking for another basketball player. That's just the vibe. And she gave me messy. She gave me messy because she was one of the women who sat at a table and brought up the conversation of, I believe, Christian, the mailman, not being assertive enough and strong enough to be the type of man she want to go for it. And she said, "We, I feel like we should tell him. And so when they call him over, oh, I don't want to be a part of this. And I'm like, but you the messy bitch that brought it up, wanted it to be told, but then you want to walk away like you ain't stopping. Stacy, I think, is going to get on my nerve, but let's keep watching. I remember Vernisha. I said Vernisha wasn't one of my star casts. She wasn't one of my star casts, but I feel like one of my star casts getting ready to get voted off first for the women so Vernisha can get that star. I liked her. I thought <sighs> pink is one of my favorite colors. She had on that flowy pink gown where from the casting special, we know she got body, yada, 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 yada. Like we know what's under that gown, but I like that she had the confidence to say, I want you all to get to know me for me, my beauty, and not what's banging underneath this pink dress. You can still see all the bangs without having it to be skin tight, plunge down to here, ass out. For the girls who had the asses out, no shade. But I just like the confidence of Renisha knowing I'm beautiful without having to put it all out on the line on our first interaction. I like Renisha. I like everything she gave this episode and then more and more people started pouring and we get to see people actually getting to know each other let's talk about some of the key getting to knowings that i saw let me go through my star players first joe joel joe he's one of my star players joe hit it off with Renisha, and i like them as a couple already one thing <clears throat> Let me get my two sands out the way. First, Tommy, I say it every season. Let Don't let two people go home on the first episode. Let everybody mingle, get together. The aha could have been nobody goes home. Just so I might not vibe with you off of the first impression, but I might get to know you a second time and, and get that vibe. And I feel like two people didn't get a chance to vibe. Um... Point number two, I'm happy I didn't see people playing the game. Like last season at that ranch or lake, wherever they were, <laughs> resort, 
We saw people that first episode. Let me do a foot rub so I can get a vote over here. Let me swing in a swing and put my feet in your lap so I can get a vote over here. Like we saw a lot of people doing stuff just for votes. A lot of people hooking up connections that first week just for votes. And this season, it felt like people really were just interacting with each other for vibes. I like it. KG came through. I, so the guest, the cast was surprised that KG came through. He is the 10th male. And a lot of the men was not feeling it. They was like, he's already a celebrity. And a lot of women were like, oh, he's not so long. I want a chance. KG is cute. I hope he finds a good woman this season. But let's get back to Joel and Vernicia. I like them. They bonded over the fact that they were both single parents. He gave her a lot of compliments. She don't look like she should have a 19-year-old daughter either, but I don't look like I should have an 18-year-old son. <laughs> this ain't about me. <laughs> Moving on. Um, I like them. I hope they go out on a date and vibe and take this further. I first thought um, maybe he's not ready. His wife just passed away maybe a few years ago. What was it? Two years ago. Maybe he's not ready to date, but he says that he's ready to date. So I'm here for it. I hope they hit it off and move forward throughout the process. Up next, Jason who is the teacher ex-basketball player, runs into Miss, what is her real name? Because I ain't going to call her fly. Um, Alexis. Jason used to be Alexis's son, son's basketball coach. And Alexis gave me thirst, the thirstiest of the thirst basketball mom. I've been there. My son has played sports ever since he was three years old. I've seen these type of parents, single parents, <laughs> who thirst over the coaches. They come to the games in their shortest of shorts, tightest of tights, <laughs> want to get a coach a hug, good game coach. I got you a gift card, coach. Bitch, we paid us $35 for these boys to be on this team. I ain't buying gift cards. I was a little bit more broke when my son was younger. So I def I understand a lot of these coaches volunteer and it is nice to show your appreciation. But I'm telling you, I've seen a lot of single moms do the most. She came up to him and was like, oh, you used to be my son's basketball coach. I know exactly who you is. I've been wanting to flirt with you for a long time, but I didn't think it was appropriate. But now that you're here and I guess you ain't his coach no more, let's get it on. Like your number, I won't. I felt like that was turning Jason off. Like, damn, bitch. <laughs> like, I felt like it. she was coming on too strong. And we all know men like to chase. If you take the chase away from them and they feel like they can just get you nine times out of the ten, they're going to hit it and quit it with you. Or they're going to be turned off and be like, okay, moving on. So I, I don't like Jason with Alexis. Now, Jason was talking to somebody and his eye caught Kyra, the attorney. She had on, I love emerald green. Emerald green is one of my second favorite colors outside of orange because I look good in orange too, but I love an emerald green. And she had a nice tight form fitting. Now, she did have everything she had out for display. I ain't mad at it because she looked good in her green dress. Like, do it like Phoenicia. Do it like Kyra. However you do it, just be confident. <clears throat> so, he was like, uh-uh, I got to so hold up. Let me go talk to her over there. I don't recall the conversation they had, but I can see them going out on a date. Who is my next star player for the men? I think oh, he, about to, he lost his star. Khalil. Khalil comes to the meet and greet in what looks like one of his student suits. Like, the jacket was too short. Even before he lifted his arms, the jacket didn't hit right. It was too short. It was ill-fitting. It didn't match. Like, you had on 
royal blue pants, a brown belt, and a black jacket. Your shirt underneath didn't look iron. It was like, did you just roll out of bed? Like, do you care? Do you care? Like, women are visual, too. They want to see a man and at least put together. From the moment I first saw him, I was like, no, sir. And he's not a bad-looking man. He just put the wrong first impression. And then he couldn't hold a conversation with anybody. Like, he was talking to the other attorney who I don't like. <laughs> I don't like her. He was talking to the other attorney and was like... I. She was like, what is one of your flaws? And he was like, mean girls. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, what do you mean, mean girls? He gives me, he feels like girls are mean to him because he tries to hit on them and they get, they probably give him no attention. But you aren't putting your best dating foot out there. At least iron your clothes. If you don't do nothing, like the shirt he had on in the confessional was not ironed. A lot, I saw a lot of nervous people today, but, and it could have been nerves and I'm, I'm, I could never do a dating show like this because I'm very shy. It may not seem like it. a lot of my friends will be like, bitch, you ain't shy. But when I first get to meet someone, I am not the outgoing, you know, silly, fun person that. You won't get that because I will have a wall up. I want to see how our energy vibes. And then if I feel good energy, then the wall will come down. And then, hey, you know, but so, but I, that might have been Khalil. So who can get my new star? I don't know. I re, I'm looking at these men. Oh, I, I don't know. Ooh, it's hot. <laughs> It's hard. Like, I don't, I think Jason and Joel might be the only two men I like left. Like, the next man that can go is Troy. Troy definitely gives me, I'm not cute. I know I'm not cute, but I got some coins. So, women are bust, they pussy open for coins. <laughs> like, that's because everything, he, every woman he met, he talked about, you want to go to Cancun? You would like to travel the world with me? I got money. I like, that to me, that's a turn off. If you come to me on our first encounter and invite me on an international trip, I'm going to be like serial killer. <clears throat> you ain't getting ready to take me out the country and drop my body and nobody ever hears <laughs> from me again. No. So I don't like Troy. I don't like his arrogance. And I'm like, boo, you're not even cute. And then when everybody was standing up there, I'm like, half of the women are taller than you. <sighs> Vote him out next. He, he should have went home first. Now let's talk about my star players over on the women's side. Miss Liz, I love her. She is like my Danny of the season. But she's falling for, and I can already tell from the previews, who did she fall? The wedding. I got to look at the names. The wedding person. The real estate agent who performs weddings on the side. David. <sighs> they bonded over both being in church choirs. And, you know, she wanted somebody who loves the Lord. And I ain't mad at you. I do too. I, I, I have that. <laughs> I do have that. So it's not like I want. I do have a man that loves the Lord. But. <laughs> I feel like. They're about to be the first couple that links from this first meeting and don't give anybody else a chance. And Liz about to get her feelings hurt because I said it once, I said it again, and I already see it in a preview. This man loves love. He loves honeymoon phases. He loves making a woman feel loved and being woo 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 and be all up into that. And then as soon as he comes out of that phase, it's like, I ain't really ready for love. Let me move on. And do the woo-woo-woo with somebody else. We already see it. Because he in a preview later on where he said, maybe I'm not ready to get married again. I'm like, this is ready to love. Ain't nobody asked. This ain't The Bachelor. Like, you don't get on your knee with a ring at the end of this. You just give somebody flowers and say, I want to go out on another date. <laughs> uh, Liz, I hope the foreshadowing of the preview is wrong. I hope you don't put all your eggs in David's basket, but we shall see. Up next, 
my my nev my next star player was Ida. Ida is getting ready to go home first for the women. Y'all already saw the show. Two men went home. So Ida talks too much, and I talk too much too, <laughs> cause she was talking to Jason, and Jason was like, "I've been looking for red flags this whole time, and here it is." Ida, you have to be like me. I, I'm like, or you need a best friend like mine. My best friend, when I get to talking, she'll be like, hold up. I heard that story before and I don't want to hear it again. I'm like, okay, girl. Because <laughs> I don't get to talking. And in my mind, when I'm talking to people, my mouth is going. And I get it honest. It's, it comes from my Dave, the Davis side of my family. Every Davis I know can, can talk. Too much energy. Love to talk. When we get to a family function, all you hear is mouths, ton of mouths, yelling loud, and I'm the quiet one. <laughs> I get it honest. So when I'm talking to my friends, in my mind, I'm constantly thinking, Angie, ask them about their day and listen. Don't get, because somebody will say something and my mind will trigger a story and I'll be like, oh girl, yeah, and so-and-so needed it. And I get to talking. So I'm constantly telling myself to shut up. Don't dominate the conversation. Listen to what other people have to say. Don't tell people the same story five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. <laughs> Ida, you have to do that with yourself when you know that you're a talker. But she getting ready to go home. I already see it. Tressa, I liked her. I did not like that brown dress you put on. I know you was trying to show... Yeah, you thick, but you got ass and titties too. It just wasn't flattering to me. I felt like you could have put on something else to still show off all the ass and titties that you got. Because it's there. You could have put on a pink dress like um, Vernicia and people would have still saw all the ass and all the titties. But I like you, trust a girl. I feel like you gonna, Jason liked you because you were funny, but Jason also... You were the one Jason was talking to, and he called Kyra's eye. Moving on. Now, who else up in here? Everybody likes, I'm going to say her name right, Chris Santhium. I'm still going to call you Chris because I'm going to fuck that up too. And it was funny because Tommy was like, who you feeling? And I was like, Chris, Chris Thiem, Chris Thea. And he was like, Chris Santhium. <laughs> He's like, if you're feeling the girl, you got to learn how to say her name. That's first. That's period. <laughs> That's true. Just call the girl Chris. She knows she got a hard ass name. And somebody said Chrysanthemum is a flower. I ain't never heard of it, but moving on. Who else? Oh, let's talk about that other flight attendant. What was her name? I done forgot it already. You know, I don't even see it on my paper. Andrea. Andrea was talking to, I want to say, the guy, I can't remember his name, the guy in the baby blue suit. I ain't feeling him. Is that Ron? I don't remember which one he is. I, I'm going to have the names down more next week the more I see him. The baby blue suit about her cat that ran away, but she don't feel like the cat ran away because the mama was watching it. She felt like somebody stole the cat. And he was like, I don't give a damn about your cat. You already give an old lady in the house with five, six cats. Girl. You getting ready to go home. Don't nobody give a damn about this cat. Now, a puppy, maybe. People love puppies, but people don't be giving a damn about no cat. Then, she had a conversation with... I don't remember. Who did she have? The chef. I don't remember which one. I, I done got them mixed up. But she had a conversation with one of the guys. It might have been Ron. About children. Yeah, because the chef, I think she had the cat conversation with the chef. Ron, she had the conversation with about the children. And she explained that she was a flight attendant. And he was like, he don't um mind her being a flight attendant. But once she had a baby, she got to stay in the house with these kids. He don't want his wife working. And I said, oh, okay. Here's another Marceau. Run, girl, run. Fuck him. And the whole time I'm thinking... I know so many people married to flight attendants that have newborns, like tons of babies, and ain't nobody got no problem. Because I think like the flight attendants take like a year off of work when they have a baby and so, and they still get paid. And then when they go back, it's like, it depends on what type of flight attendant you are. You can do, look at my braids. 
You can do short runs where, like, say you're going from Atlanta to Chicago all day, and then you're at home at night. You're not doing overnight runs. Or if you're doing a long run, you the husband, them your kids too, you watch them until I get back. Because I'm sure if they do long runs, they might do three days on, three days off. You know, it ain't no different than being married to a nurse that does like four 12-hour shifts and then they off for three days. <sighs> Anybody that have that Marceau backwards ass attitude that want to keep you locked up in a house when you don't want to be. Now, if it's your goal in life to have children and to be able to have a man that can provide for you so you can stay at home and raise them, that's your prerogative. But if it's not and you meet a man that just wants you to be locked up, to the kitchen, barefoot and pregnant, run. I think that's all the little couplings I saw that I liked. Oh, let's talk about the couple that knows each other. Because everyone likes AJ. He's tall, dark, and handsome with a beard. Everyone is attracted to AJ, but AJ gives me full of shit vibes. Kyra knows AJ. They went out on two dates. The second date they went out was her worst date. And I'm like, girl... If the only thing that happened was he didn't pay the bill, that was your worst day ever. I've heard of some worst dates. <laughs> but anyway, he was still trifling for that. But I'm also the type of female that if it's an understanding. Now, I would say on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth date, I do probably expect a man to pay. But once we're dating... <laughs> I don't mind picking up a check. Like, I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm not old fashioned. <laughs> I'm not like, but okay. I understand the second date. He, so she had an open tab. <clears throat> now what was confusing to me, correct me in the comments. She said she went to the bathroom and she laid her card on her open tab. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, if you laid your card down, he thinking you want to pay. Now, correct me, did she lay her card down or did she, the check just get laid down? And when she came back, she noticed the check was not paid. <sighs> I'm confused because I would feel like just as a person, male or female, if someone brings you the check and you put your card down and you go to the bathroom, what do you want me to do? Get up and put your card on the counter and put my, like, <clears throat> correct me. But at the end of the day, she said she came back from the bathroom and the check was not paid. And so then she proceeded to pay the check. When she texted him later about why he didn't pay the check, he texted her, you need to worry about, or you need to change your opinion on gender roles or some of to that nature. Like men don't always have to pay. And I agree. Like if we're on an understanding of we just kicking it and I don't know you like that. I might pay for myself. Like I don't have no problem paying for myself. But if we going out and you trying to get to know me on another level and you make me pay for myself, I will look at that a certain kind of way. Now, I'm not going to say that's my worst date ever like girl you're gonna have some pretty good dates if that's your worst day ever but your reasoning at the end would have turned me off i'm like fuck you i ain't gotta change my mind about shit and um and that's pretty much what she did and they never talked again so now she just wants to put all the cards on the table and be like what you said to me kind of upset me and then and, and about that situation so because she telling the girls he El Cheapo. And I'm sure he came up with a story because he didn't want, because you saw how, um, I feel like I, I'm about to say something <laughs> that's probably against the grain. Naya did say that bullshit last season about not splitting a mortgage. But all the women, when they were talking to KG, I feel like all the women were still kind of like, KG, you shouldn't have said it, but you still should be splitting on mortgages. Like, I feel like a lot of women feel like Naya. They just aren't vocal 
and saying it. And I feel like all you have to do is let people know where you at when you're dating. Like if you're the type of woman that I never put my card on the table when the check comes, that's a man's responsibility. Let that be known so your man won't be shocked <laughs> when his card get declined. <laughs> or if you like me and you pay most of the time, I just like most of the time, because me and my husband get paid on opposite days. Like I'm every two weeks and he first and the 15th. So if it's a payday and I know he ain't just got paid and I want to go out to eat, I'd be like, let's go get a steak. And he's like, I ain't got paid yet. I ain't asked you if you got paid. I said, let's go get a steak. <laughs> and I'll and I'll pay. And I don't have a problem with it. <sighs> it's backwards thinking. I, I don't understand because I ain't gonna get into that. That's a that might be a totally another video because a lot of women don't think like me, but let's move on from that. <sighs> I don't forgot what I said. Oh, because he came out and said that his card declined, and that's why he didn't pick up the tab because he tried to and his card declined. And I said that's bullshit. Because how do you go out on a date with someone? And not look at your, you know, look at your bank app and see how much money you got. And if you see, okay, I only got $15, that means you can only afford to buy one drink. You should have bought her one drink and got up and left. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. And you only got one card. You ain't have a credit card. Okay, your bank card ain't go through, but you ain't have a couple of dollars on your credit card. <sighs> I don't believe that story. I feel like that's what he said for TV because he doesn't want to be seen as that type of man with all the other ladies. <sighs> I, I don't care. It's something about AJ I don't like. He gives me player vibes. And then you want to be a broke player? No. If you're going to play, you got to um, pay to play. Um, And that was it. That was everybody. I, I talked too much. <laughs> I was trying to be condensed. <laughs> Maybe that's why I need notes so I can have structure. I will try to take notes going forward. But I have fun talking off the dome too. <laughs> but anyway, Tommy surprised everybody and was like, he had already sent Khalil home. I told you Khalil was going home off of just his wrinkle suit, period. But little Christian went home. I wish they would have gave Christian another chance. I felt like Troy and Ron were in the bottom too because I felt like Andrea was not here for that um, barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. Mm -mm. and Troy, he gonna get in trouble next week for kissing everybody on the cheek. And that's another thing. When I first meet you and I don't know you, I'm very, like, personal space. Personal. Don't come in kissing me on the cheek. And he thought he was doing something because he's like, all I gotta do is kiss a girl on the cheek and they smile. I probably would have gave you an awkward smile like, <laughs> like, get the fuck up off of me. You know, I don't like Troy. It's oh, I'm looking through this list of men. I don't like Joel and Jason. Joel and Jason. Mm, mm, mm. I wish they would have gave Christian another chance. Like he could be like me, where I just got to fill out the energy first, then. And half of y'all about to get played by everybody else on this list. I can already see it. Y'all about to get played, and. You're going to be at the reunion fussing and crying and Christian going to be like, well, I got a girl at home. <laughs> I can't wait to see the mess that's about to pop up this season. I like so many of the ladies. So many of the men are giving me bullshit. <sighs> like, comment, share. Let's see what happens. I'm so excited to see who clicks up and dates who and what, what's going down. I'm, I'm ready for the season. So get in the comments. Let's talk. Let's have a good time. Go ahead and hit subscribe because I'm going to be reviewing and all that good stuff. And I'll see y'all next week. Bye.